Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Lumsden of the Ardbeg Distillery, and today I'm sitting on the pier, actually at Ardbeg Distillery, with two members of my peer group, namely Jeffrey Manber, who's Chief Executive Officer of Nanorax, a company based in Houston in the United States, and beside him, Charlie McLean, the famous whiskey writer and historian. So, why are we here today? Well, the reason we're here today is to discuss the results of a very exciting experiment we've been involved in. And as a result of an approach that was made to us by Jeffrey and his company, for the very first time ever, a Scotch whisky company was given the opportunity to carry out an experiment up in space on board the International Space Station. And this is the result of this. This is the actual International Space Station liquid which has been up there in conditions of microgravity for two and a half years. So I've spent the last few months analysing the liquid here and my control samples on Earth. And I'm finally about to publish the results in this white paper. So gentlemen, just um, a brief summary of the findings of the results. We used gas chromatography to analyse both sets of samples for key volatile congeners. They appeared similar in both samples. We used high performance liquid chromatography to look at the phenolic compounds, which give Ardbeg its lovely smoky flavour. There was some small differences there. Uh, one of the compounds appeared to be more in the International Space Station sample. We used GCMS to look very in great detail at the individual molecules and then we also used HPLC again to look at wood extractives and that's where we started to see quite a bit of difference. The space station liquid seemed to have a bit less of these wood extractives so I was expecting a little bit of difference in the flavour. However, when myself and my team went to nose and taste the samples or organoleptic analysis I was quite astonished at how different the, the samples were. So that was the, the key result for me was that the earth control samples certainly resembled Ardbeg as we know and love it. But up on the space station, it was a whole new range of samples, some flavours I hadn't encountered before. Well, dare I say it, Bill, but I mean, so what? I mean, how can you use that? Yeah, okay, that, that's a, a very good question, Charlie. You know, firstly, and this depends very much on Jeffrey and his team of scientists, we'd like to take the experiment on to the next stage, maybe make it a little bit bigger and better, do something a bit more advanced, again up in space. The second thing is that having discovered the new flavours in this liquid, I now need to think how I can introduce some of them into Ardbeg whisky here on Earth. And I think it will help me develop some exciting new Ardbeg whiskies. But are you going to build a gravity neutral warehouse? <laughs> now that, that would be absolutely ideal. I think the technology is maybe still a few, a few uh, decades or centuries away from that. <laughs> One of the questions that I think a lot of viewers would ask is why now? Mm. And uh, for us in the space business, this is a very exciting time because we always had tantalizing hints that, that uh, uh, products that are grown mm. or manufactured mm. in space were a little bit different than mm. their counterparts on the Earth. There was a, an experiment where roses were grown in space and the aroma was different right. than right. those on the yeah. ground. And so yeah. that's really interesting, question of why yeah. and, and what can we do about yeah. this? And, and so previously we had the space shuttle and that was only about 10 days of space. Mm -hmm. And the International Space Station and the US National Laboratory mm -hmm. in Space only was finished uh, being constructed about uh, uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. So the timing was very good to reach out to Oddbag and say, if we look at terpenes, which are, as you said, the building blocks for so many different flavorings and, and food, what do we learn if it's up there for a year, two years, three years? For, so for us at Nanorax, this is exciting because it was the earliest we could do this experiment, uh, given the reality, reality that we can now send things to a laboratory in space and return the products down safely. And now the question is, where do we go next, uh, understanding more about terpenes? And it seems from what you said about the rose experiment, 
experiment. Yeah. Now, what we've found, Jeffrey, is also backing that up in yeah. that these terpenes, these flavour active compounds, seem to have reacted a little bit right. differently. Right. And what are you planning to do? How can you take it on? How can you take it further? Well, I think that this different ratio of wood extractives on the space station sample and the Earth sample has shown me that there might be ways to extract different flavours from the oak wood. So I have to look at all sorts of things, Charlie, different types of wood, different surface area. I don't know yet. The, the, the results are so hot off the press that it's just in its infancy. Because the, the, the liquid to wood ratio in the, the, these tiny samples was extremely high. I mean, there was, it, they, they were getting a lot of contact yeah, with wood. Yeah. It was much higher than we would normally get in an actual barrel. Mm. However, the experiment was very valid because the earth samples and the mix sticks and the space station ones had exactly the same ratio yes. of contact. So that's why we could compare it directly. Mm. But of course, you wouldn't normally expect this that's colour in something that's dark. been in wood for two and a half yeah. years. Yeah. Certainly from our perspective here at the Ardbeg Distillery, I'm sure this is going to give rise to a lot of exciting new Ardbeg products. Yeah. So gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to come here today and joining us in this discussion. Well, thank you.